godly men exhibit godly character. So we're going through this book, and I just want to read you the intro to the chapter. It says this, good character matters. Its, valuable, its value is beyond measure. Character involves honesty, courage, righteousness, and virtue in every aspect of life. Godly men reflect God's character as revealed in Scripture, and we can see how much God cares about character in the following passages. So look at Proverbs 22.1. A good name is more desired than great wealth. Favor is better than silver and gold. Proverbs 20.11 says, Even a child makes himself known by his acts, but whether his conduct is pure and upright. And Abraham Lincoln said, I would rather be a little nobody than an evil somebody. So the Bible has a lot to say about godly character. But so does the world. So does media. Has a lot to say about good character. And what the world will say and what media will say is that it's boring. Good, having good character is not fun. And that the bad guys are going to win at the end. And... As a recovering professional wrestling fan, I could actually relate to that because all my favorites were the bad guys. The Macho Man, Jake the Snake, Roberts. I would root for the NWO. I wanted those guys to win. And why not, the, the, why not be the bad guy because chicks dig the bad guys. But what we find out today is that what, what the world is trying to say is that good character, godly character, makes you boring and predictable. And they're right. And that's a good thing. I wouldn't say boring necessarily, but predictable. Maybe a better word for that is dependable. But godly character should make you dependable. When life starts to crash around for the people that you love and care for, who are they going to run towards? Who are they going to seek out? The hit and miss attitude of someone with questionable behavior and character or the one who's consistent, the one who's dependable? the one who's reliable and trustworthy. If a man with godly character says he's going to do something, it's going to take a significant event to actually stop him from doing that. A man with godly character will have your back. A man with godly character is going to speak highly about you in front of your face and speak even higher about you behind your back. Men with godly character is who I want in my circle. That's who I want in my corner is those kind of men. Those are the men that I want in my personal board of directors. Today's culture may call these guys boring, but I call them dependable, consistent, and men that I want to count on. So at the end of the day, your friends, your girlfriends, your wives, your kids, your coworkers, your church, your people, that's the kind of man that they truly need. And it's the type of man that we're actually being called to be. So how do we become a man of godly character or stay that way? And, and that's the one thing is, is that we, once you have it, the next battle starts is how do you keep it? Because it has to start first. So how do you get it? It has to start with vision. We have to have a vision for our life. If you aim at nothing, you're going to hit it every time. We want to aim at something. You need to look at what you want and then go get it. A few weeks ago, we talked about what would people say at your funeral? What would you want people to say at your funeral? And then we challenged you guys to, to write it out. But now that it's written, if it's written, or at least it might be playing in your mind, is that the life that you want to live? Is that the vision for your life? And if so, go get it. Because godly character, our focus, our vision, it has to be lined up with God's word. And the Bible has a lot to say about vision. Proverbs 29, 18 says, Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is the who keeps the law. Another translation simply says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but happy is he who keeps the teaching. When there's no clear vision, when there's no godly inspired vision for God's purposes and standards in your life, Godly men is like, are likely to lose that spiritual passion and conviction. That's why we have to have godly vision in order to be a godly man. Or else you're going to lose that passion. You're going to lose that conviction. 
And when we don't consistently look at the word of God as our guide, as our compass, as our, as our destination, what happens is we start to lose the desire of what God has for us and what God has to say. And all of a sudden what we do is we get one degree off, just a little bit off. And as we, the days go by, one degree starts to add up. And all of a sudden we're away from where we want to be. And if we're not anchored and attached to the word of God, the world will come in and take us off course so fast. And then all of a sudden, the world, politics, media, entertainment, the world's standards, the world's beliefs, that's going to start being our guide if we're not careful. And when this happens, all we have to do is look at that verse up there and see what happens. We perish. But happy is he who keeps the teaching. We have to look at God as the standard. And if not, we will easily and very quickly start slipping and begin to conform into the worldly beliefs and behaviors and lifestyles that it's going to promote to us. You ever notice that when you take a day or two off of something, it makes it that much more difficult to come back to that thing? Ever notice when you, you take some time off, like, Upward men. I love upward men. I love Monday nights, but I got back from a week vacation last night. And I'll tell you, you guys are hard to come back to. <laughs> but you ever notice that that happens? You ever notice you take a day or, or two, a couple of weeks off at church? Maybe you take a week or two off here at, on Monday nights. Maybe you take a couple of days off with your regular routine with the Lord. And all of a sudden your consistency is gone. And because of that lack of desire, your desires start to shift. And it's hard to get back to where you were. Take a few days off from God. Take a few days off from his word. It's difficult to get back into that routine. And I think we need to adopt the belief and the conviction as upward man has been here tonight that there's no days off in our Christianity. We don't take days off as followers of Jesus that's the, one of the main qualities of a, of a godly man is it's consistency. And because when we are inconsistent, the desires for the right things, it starts to decrease. And the desires for the wrong things start to increase. You ever notice that? And then it's a fight to get back to where you were. And when a man doesn't change his character unless he's strongly motivated to pursue God and seek the character qualities that God has for your life. And apart from that motivation, the desire to follow God, answering the convictions of our heart, apart from that, simply just having an intellectual belief in God is not enough that's going to change us. And it's not enough to keep us on that vision that we set for our life. We need to actively pursue God. And through that consistency, in order of that consistent godly man that we want to be, that's, who we're going, that's when we're going to start blessing other people in our life. But it's going to have to take our consistency. And some of us were here and saying, well, that's a lot of pressure. And, and, and it is a lot of pressure. Think about it. There are people in your life right now, and they may never say this to your face, but there are people in your life right now that are depending on you to have godly character. Which means you need to be intentional about not only getting it, but keeping it. God has put people and things around you to bless, to benefit, and to be rock solid for. But it depends on your consistency. It depends on your dependence on God. So the challenge here is don't run away from that. Don't run away from that responsibility or think it's too much or it's too much pressure. Run towards it with a mindset of, of how much it's an honor to be able to, to have God uniquely design us and call us as men of God to bless our families, to bless our friends, to bless our church through our character, through our consistency, and through our relationship with Jesus. Desire to be the man that people go to when they need the hands and feet of Jesus, when they're burdened, when they need something dependable. Desire it and then also be ready for it when they call because it will, they will call. Build your life through your vision 
and let that vision be through the word of God. Knowing what you want and how you want to be, even though the pursuit of Jesus, that the connection to him is where you need to build that vision, but that connection to him is how you're going to build your life, your foundation. Matthew 7, 24 says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain fell and the floods came, the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and, was, and great was the fall of it. When I was studying and praying over this message this week, one of the things that I noticed that I, I noted before, but it just it highlighted something different in me there is that there is something going to happen universally regardless of who you are. If you're a man of God or you're an atheist, if you're a man or woman, you're rich or poor, you live in a great home, you live on the street, you have a great job, you don't have the job at all, something is going to happen to all of us. The rain's going to fall, the flood is going to come, the wind is going to blow, and it's going to try to beat you down. That's happening to everybody. What's different is the outcome. The outcome is going to change based on how you decide to build your foundation. You can have no vision. You can have no connection to God. Or you could just be lukewarm and go through the motions and perish, like that verse in Proverbs said. Or you can have vision and you can stay connected to God and then when all the stuff happens, when all this, the stuff of life that's going to hit everybody starts to hit you, you're going to be the one standing. And when you stay standing, when everybody else seems to be knocked down, that's when the people that you love, that's when the people that are in your circle that God has put in your life for a reason, they're going to be looking up at you. They're going to say, your life is something different. You have something different that's going on in your life. What is it? That's when you can share Jesus. And so they're going to be knocked down and they're going to have their hand up towards you and you can lift them up because of your strength, because of your consistency, because of your protection that you have, because you built your life on something stronger than the world or enemy can destroy. You're going to be able to be a blessing to those that God has put in your life. So the challenge is allow how you think, how you process information, what you value, what you say no to, what you say yes to. Let all those things be rooted in the character of God. And let the character of God flow out of you as he pours it into you through your pursuit and your consistency in your relationship with Jesus. But here's the thing when it comes to godly character. When you have it, you have to guard it. 1 Peter 5.8, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Luke 21.36 says to stay awake at all times. The devil's going to look for an opening. The world is going to look for an opening. Digital marketing experts estimate that most Americans are exposed to around 4,000 or to 10,000 ads a day. What that simply means is that you have a lot of things competing for your attention. I even think the phones listen to you now. I remember having a conversation with Brandy not too much about needing toothpaste. Guess what ads came up on my phone? Toothpaste. They listen. They know what ads are going to be appealing to you. But here's the da danger is, it's not just the number of ads that you're exposed to, but what kind of ads you're exposed to and what they're trying to accomplish. Look at 1 John 2.16. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but from the world. The three things listed there are not from God. They're from the world. But what stands at the core of almost everything that's advertised towards men? 
It's the desires of the flesh. It's the desires of the eyes. And it's the pride of life. We have to understand how all this works. Because advertisers and and the world is going to try to stimulate the mind in ways that tend you to draw you away from God's standards and into the world's standards. Let's take beer commercials. You watch a beer commercial lately? So it's not just a guy drinking a beer. It's not just a guy on a couch saying, hey, you know, it's hot outside. And I drank this, and it tasted good. You should get one. No, what it is, it's a guy having a party. Women in bikinis are playing volleyball in the back. All your friends, all the friends are laughing and joking. And all your jokes, you've got a house full of people. You're the guy to be around. And everyone loves you, especially the blonde that's coming out of the hot tub to have a sip of your beer. So what do you do? You go and you buy the beer. And then what happens? You have a party. And three people show up. And all you do is wish that they would go home because it's almost 9 o'clock and you got to work the next day. It's not the same as what's advertised from you. I like to golf. I'm not a great golfer, but I like to golf. And my favorite golfer was, was swinging Callaway clubs. And I figured if I got Callaway clubs, that would fix my game. And at a time when I couldn't afford Callaway clubs, I bought Callaway clubs. And three months later, sold them at a loss because my game actually got worse. Not as advertised. The world draws you in with these lusts. And they inundate you with messages contrary to God and his word. And here's the deal. If you're empty, these are the messages that are going to fill you up. When you have built your life on the sand, these messages are what's going to be appealing to you. But if you saturate your mind with God's word, you're connected to God daily, then God's word is not going to leave any room for Satan's influences in your life. Your mind is a battlefield. Fill it with God's thoughts. Fill it with God's ways. Fill it with God's truth. And then when the world lies to you, there's no room for it to dwell. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. In order to obey Jesus, we have to know what he says. Knowing what he says helps us protect our mind. Remember, your mind is the battle, and that's where Satan will try to destroy your character. He's going to start with your mind. And in the conflict, if you're in a conflict, it's important to bring every thought and desire into into line with Jesus' character and purposes. And it's very easy to say and very difficult to do. If someone would come up to you and tell you, hey, man, I've had a tough week. I had a brother that I thought was close to and found out that he's been talking behind my back. And he's been lying and gossiping about me and trying to be divisive. What advice would you give him? You'd probably tell him that, you know, that sucks. And, you know, you need to pray to God, seek wisdom. Got to have a heart for forgiveness. And you probably have to confront this guy. Don't let it ruin your peace. Know who God says you are. All those things. And you'd be right. And that's great advice. Until it happens to you. What happens if someone is talking behind your back? and being divisive and and trying to cut you down. Then your prayers sometimes seem a little different. It's like, Lord, I just want to pray for Johnny that, you know, you can get him, you know, or, you know, hurt him, or, you know, let's figure out how we can make justice out of this thing. It's easy to say the right thing and very hard to do the right thing, and the enemy knows this. And that's the key. Satan knows that. Every action out of character of God starts with your thought life first. Everything you do out of character of God's will, it starts here first. You want to live out godly character, you have to first think like a man of godly character. That means we have to learn to bring our thought life under Christ's authority and his leadership. So how do you do that? First, you got to understand God knows every thought. 
nothing is hidden from him. All those things that you think about that is hidden from each one of us, God knows it. Psalm 94, 11 says, the Lord knows the thoughts of men and they are but a breath. Not only does he know our thoughts, but the word tells us that we're going to have to give account for things spoken and unspoken. 2 Corinthians 5, 10 says, we must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. That's why it's so important to saturate your mind with the word of God. It's essential that we're in the word of God. So our thoughts and our actions continue to align with God's character. Second thing we got to remember is that our, the mind is a battlefield. All those advertisements, all those thoughts and desires, those three things, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, the pride of life, all that starts in your mind. But here's the thing, though. We don't have to be a slave to those thoughts. We can't control what we think. And it'd be good to give yourself some grace sometimes, too, when the thoughts seem to go a little bit crazy. Good reminder that it's not a sin to be tempted. Jesus was tempted. It's a sin when you give in to those temptations. That's why it's important to get rid of those thoughts immediately, which brings us to the next one. Take every thought captive. Doing this well is making sure that you're doing the battle two different ways. You're doing battle against your sinful nature, and you're doing battle against Satan's spiritual forces. And when a thought or a temptation comes to your mind, you immediately take hold of it. This is a discipline that we need to start developing, is that when a temptation or a thought that's sinful comes to our mind, we immediately take hold of it before it goes anywhere else. It may not be a sin to see the hot girl walk past you, but the second glance might be. Take it captive. It's saying, God, here it is. Take it. I need your help here, so I'm giving these thoughts to you. And it's a discipline that we need to develop as men to be able to, to make sure that our thoughts don't go further than they should. And then we got to replace the bad with good. If something sinful starts to look attractive, you've got to find something more attractive to replace it. Philippians 4, 8, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's anything excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about those things. This is commanding us to focus on things intentionally that are of God. When a thought enters your mind and it's not from God, whether it's lust or pride or fear or hatred towards somebody, we have to give those to God and bring this verse up to replace it. If you don't replace it, then there's space there just for the bad, evil thoughts to continue. Protect your character and don't allow them to return. Godly character begins with what you think about. But then you've got to focus on the eternal over temporary. Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind on things above, not on the things that are on earth. Remember that the mind is controlled by the spirit, is characterized by a life of peace. The fruit of the spirit. A mind controlled by the spirit is a mind that's owned by a man with godly character. Set your mind desires on the eternal over the temporary. The win is what we get in eternity, not what we necessarily get here. And finally... Be careful what's coming in. This is the hardest part for a lot of us, but we have to learn to refuse to set any worthless or evil thing in front of your eyes. Now, we can blame advertisements and we can blame media and the world so much, but sometimes the evil and the lust that live in our mind is because we intentionally and purposely put something in front of our eyes that is specifically designed to give us those thoughts. And we got to get rid of that stuff. Because what happens is we do that and then we complain about why it's so hard not to lust or why desire and pleasure and worldly things, why it's so hard to escape those things. The world is going to make it tough enough on you. The enemy is going to t make it tough enough on you. We don't have to help him by, by intentionally putting things that are evil in front of us. Guard and protect your mind. 
the more that we're separated from the Bible, the more that we're separated from our prayer life, the things of God, the more than our thoughts and our behaviors are going to start going downhill. We need to pay attention to Scripture if we want to make good choices in our life and be the man of godly character that other people can count on. And that's a good reminder for us. And we, we talked about it already. There's people counting on you to be a man of godly character. Godly choices begin with godly character. Godly character begins with what we choose to think about. And what we choose to think about, it begins with vision, a plan and a desire for our life to be the man that actually builds our life on the rock. And as we close, remember, godly character is going to be tested. Tests reveal a person's qualities, inner qualities. You're going to be tested when you choose to intentionally build your life on the rock. You're going to be tested and tested and tested, and your character will predetermine the outcome of those tests. But this chapter was just about godly men exhibiting godly character. Other people are going to get blessed if you choose to tackle this. If you decide to be a man of godly character and intentionally build your life on the rock, they're going to see the fruit of all of that. They're going to be experience the fruit of all of that. But here's the thing. The battle that you have to fight, the thoughts that you have to make captive, the intentionality that it takes for you to pursue Jesus every single day, all those things that you have to do so they can see that fruit, they're not going to see any of that. That's between you and the Lord. But if you do that, what's unseen then what they do see and what they do experience is going to be a man that people can count on. This will be a man that they know is going to be consistent, is going to be strong, is going to be dependable, to be a man of God with good character. And that's our call. So it's worth the work. Amen?